This is a world famous tapas in Malaga. Wow. Oh man, even better. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're at this really awesome restaurant in Malaga. Just walking around the city, I would say terrace dining has to be a thing, but this is also one of the biggest restaurants I've been even in all of Spain. Uh, just walking through the inside, a lot of art, a lot of tables, but I think we got the seat of the house because we got the old Roman theater behind us. A really popular attraction here in Malaga and Hanny here was telling me that this restaurant El Pimpi has a really amazing story so can you tell us a little bit about where we are? Yeah so El Pimpi has become really a landmark in Malaga in its own right. Of course it is right next to as uh, Dan said the Roman theatre, the uh, Moorish castle uh, so we have this beautiful backdrop but El Pimpi in itself is a tourist destination and is one of the locals favorites. It's an iconic restaurant here uh, it spans through a uh, um, um, weaving through a number of buildings and has this gorgeous terrace. And it's named after a guy, Pimpy. He used to help out with the, uh, when the shipments came in down in the port, uh, he would help with loading and unloading. And he didn't really have a job down there, but he created one for himself. You could say he's an original entrepreneur. And so this place has been named after him. And it is just such a core part of the city. And it's really somewhere that you want to come when you're in Malaga. Yeah. And also we could try a lot of the Malagan dishes here, uh, yeah. like what we have in front of us, uh, our waitress came and said that this is one, the most popular salad in Malaga. Yeah, so it's a very, very typical salad for Malaga. Um, it's ensalada malagueña, uh, so it's made with potato, with bacalao, which is the salt cod, which has been rehydrated, uh, uh, onion, and some orange. So mm. it's quite a curious combination, but I think one that works really well. I'd be interested to see what you think. Mm -hmm. And the uh, jamón belota ibérico, so acorn-fed jamón. Uh, we've been eating jamón everywhere. Can't yeah. get enough of it. Exactly. But also, this cocktail they brought us is beautiful. We've been drinking a lot of uh, southern Spanish wines. We have. But this is a cocktail made of uh, Malagan wine, you said? Yeah, so it's a mojito. And it's actually, I'm going to say that, say it right now, this is the best mojito I've ever had in Malaga. It's the first time I've tried it here and it is absolutely fantastic. Um, Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's a mojito that's been made with some uh, Malaga sweet wine, with some Moscatel Malaga sweet wine. So it's got a little Malaga touch to it. Mm, Cheers. 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 Wow. Isn't that great? Oh my goodness, that's so good. Nice and limey, so it's sharp. It's mm -hmm. got the sweetness of the Malaga wine. It's a great mojito. Yeah, it's alcoholic, but it tastes like a lemonade, but with that minty touch and fresh ingredients. We even so got the, the grapes right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yummy. Oh, that's really good. Very good. So we've been given plates, but I'm going to suggest we do it as we've been doing everything else mm -hmm. and just dive in with our hands and our forks Let's straight into the plate. All right. So should we go in for the ensalada malagueña? Let's give it a go. Mm. Oh, man. Mm. Super refreshing. Oh, it's like that. A little bit of like a sweet touch from yeah. the, the orangey sauce, but the potatoes, where is that? Really crunchy. Potatoes, gorgeous. And it has that flavor of fish, which seems just so bizarre. It shouldn't work with potato and orange, but it just works so well. Yeah, I forgot to add, there's actually cod in there. Mm. Oh, yeah, it goes together very well. Mm -hmm. Got that nice citrusy flavor, refreshing. And I really appreciate those vibrant, refreshing flavors from the mojito and this nice cold potato salad we're having because yeah. the weather down here is amazing, by the way, but a little bit humid. It's very humid today, yeah. Warmer than, um, I would say, the rest of Spain. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and that's why we're on the terrace, taking in the nice weather and eating these nice, say, spring, summer type dishes. Mm -hmm. Dan, I know, right. I know you are dying to get into that jamon. 
Look at that. It's beautiful. Oh, Always see. nicely Deep presented bread. together. And the jamón in El Pimpi is famously good. Mm-hmm. Meaty. Yum. Yummy. Sliced very well, nice thin. It's kind of like a glass, crunchy-like consistency. Mm -hmm. This one's a has a little bit more meat to it, a little mm -hmm. bit leaner. Which, more meaty flavor. Yeah, appreciate it sometimes. Again. But also, because in Belota, acorn fed, it's just very, very tender, soft, melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Best ham in the world. Mm -hmm. And if in any case, um, the flavor is too much, we all, we have these fresh Love Spanish the olives right here to cleanse the palate for more. Mm. Mm. So this variety of olive is called a manzanilla. Super tasty. Yeah. Really juicy. Very Lovely. tasty. Salty, crunchy. Mm. Palate cleanser for more. Spanish food, let's More go. Of these these. Yeah, we, we've eaten a lot of ham in the last two days. Uh, I've never eaten as much ham in my life as we've managed to consume uh, since Dan arrived in town. <laughs> yeah, and that's a testament to how quality the Iberico jamón is because like, when I'm eating cured meats, usually I get, it's too salty and uh, I can only eat a handful, but I've been finishing all these plates, so they have been very, very quality so far. I will say, you hit the nail on the head there. Everything that we've eaten, all the ham that we've been offered uh, in the last couple of days is a very high quality. So mm -hmm. that is the difference. So, more Malaga food. food. <laughs> very, very typical to Malaga. So this is a ligerita de pringa. So a ligerita is like a little light bite. It's not light at all. Do not be fooled by the name. And pringa, which is the filling, is very, very typical to Malaga. And it's the meat that comes off the bones when they make a stew. There's a stew called bulchero, which we have here in Malaga. Um, and it contains lots of different meats. And what they do is they take the, the chunks of meat off the bone and then you get the, the leftovers of meat on the bone that you slowly, slowly cook and then strip away from the bones. And it mix it all together. So it's got chicken, it's got pork, uh, there may be some beef in here. I mean, it's whatever whatever meat's been put into the particular stew. Wow. Cooked really slowly, turned into like a mash, and then mixed with, you can see, this kind of like uh, oil almost. This is a lard, like um, the pig fat from the Iberian pig, colored with a bit of, um, colored with a bit of paprika. There we go, That's, that was the money shot. Look at it, it's so soft, and yes. let's give it a go. All right, looks good. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh my god. One way to describe this, meaty. The flavor in this, very brothy. Almost like a, like a French dip, with like the au jus, how they dip it, but like the flavor is porky. Yeah, porky. Instead of like beefy. Exactly, exactly. And it's like, yeah, like pulled pork almost. It's so soft. There are sandwiches and then there are the carita de, de pringa. Oh my gosh, this is so good because the Spanish are all about their pork and just the quality of the pork in all these dishes. It's like, there's not too much of like that extensive meaty odor. It's just really tender and flavorful. Mm. Very, very flavorful. So good. And actually, this is an award-winning uh, item. So it's iconic. El Pimpi appeared on a list in June this year of the world's 50 best bites, uh, 50 best plate bites and where to have them. And El Pimpi appeared with this exact dish on it. So you yeah. are eating yeah. a world famous tapa right now. Yeah. This is a world famous tapas in Malaga. So many different textures too. A little crisp on the outside with the bread. Mm -hmm. So savory, delicious. This is a great Same. bite. And actually, another way that we eat here in Spain, in Malaga, and all over Spain, in fact, is to do tapas. And we talked a little bit about this when, we're, uh, when we've been in some other places. Mm -hmm. um, but when we go out for tapas, very often you'll just go to one place, you'll go to one place, you'll have one or two tapas there, and then you'll pay the bill and you'll move on to the next place. And we're very much about walking and eating, as we've already talked about. You kind of have a little walk between each stop. This is the exact type of tapa that you would come to this place just to have this tapa and one drink, and then you might move on to the next place or, you know, whatever. This is really... I would come here just to eat this tapa. I think yeah. it's amazing. I mean, it's not really a tapa, but you know, have this bite. Mm. Brutal. 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 Brutal.
What, what is brutal mean? Really amazing, really delicious. Amazing. Yeah. New word. Tal. Like brutal. brutal. Yeah, brutal. Oh. That was definitely brutal. It was. <laughs> We tried what was voted number 20 of the top 150 best bites in the world from Taste Atlas. Yeah. This sandwich right here. Right it's here. up there for sure. In this exact place, El Pimpi. El Pimpi. Bueno, muy bien. Tenemos por aquí boquerones. Eh, boquerones victorianos, que son los más típicos de Málaga. No puedes eh, venir a Málaga y menos al Pimpi sin haber tomado unos boquerones victorianos. Hechos con tanto amor, con una fritura muy sequita, muy sequita. Así que os invito a probar esta delicatessen en, en el Pimpi. Gracias. All right, guys. Uh, another round of Malagan food. Round three. Mm -hmm. Our waitress was telling me that these are called bocarones, uh, anchovies, right? Yep. Uh, from Malaga, and she was saying that this is such a famous dish here that uh, they even call the people from Malaga bocarones. Indeed, <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they're super good. They're, these are there are different ways of having them and different varieties of bocarones. So these are bocarones victorianas. Victorianos, in fact, uh, the sm slightly smaller boquerones. They have removed the heads, but the rest of the bones are still on, but they're nice and crunchy, similar to what we had on the market, actually. Croquetas are really famous all across Spain. Uh, the Spaniards love croquetas. Here, we've got a real Malaga version of the croquetas. So this is croquetas de puchero. So, tying in very nicely with the last dish that we had, the ligarito with the um, pringa. The puchero is the stew, the soup that they make using those bones that the meat comes from to make the pringa. The stew uh, is made with chickpeas added uh, into puchero. So this is the broth from that stew made into a bechamel, a soft bechamel sauce, and then breaded and deep fried. Uh, and that is your classic croqueta. All right, let's try out the bocarones, shall we? That's All right, try them out. Mm. 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 Oh, man. I'm very pleasantly surprised because anchoas, like anchovies, could have kind of like a fishy taste, but these are different kinds, bocarones, and it's just made very well. Like you can taste the uh, this fish is really tender. I didn't even taste any bones. No, exactly. Yeah. And, and you so, said they were so bones. Small. There are bones in there, but they're so small um, that when they are cooked, they just basically soften up to yeah. to nothing. Yeah, and you can see the skin on it. I really like the texture. So yeah. Just a slight um, fry on it, but uh, yeah, all the textures from skin and uh, fish is pretty mm. soft as well from mm -hmm. the inside. Mm -hmm. So good. As you said, Patricia, our waitress, is doing a fanta fantastic job of uh, explaining every dish to us. And um, she said, in her own words, you can't come to Malaga and you certainly can't come to El Pimpi without trying these boquerones. Yeah, very, very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, wash it down with uh, another cocktail. Chin chin. Mm. This has. It has the, exactly, the sherry, the, the sherry wine. So this has Oloroso Secos. This is a dry Oloroso sh sherry. It's deep in color. It's aged in the barrel. You can really taste it in this cocktail. Uh, we should probably try some Oloroso on its own actually later. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. We'll add that to the list. It's delicious. It's, I, I never would have thought that coconut, lime and passion fruit would work with Oloroso sherry, but I, I'm not alone in saying it's amazing, right? Yeah, it is. These cocktails we've had have been very very delicious, different because most cocktails are made with liquor, but this is made with Spanish wine. And the sherry has been one of my favorite wines so far, and you can taste the hint of sherry in here. But it's also a very fruity cocktail, mm. a little bit slushy, oh, yeah. with a passion fruit, Spanish fruit, Spanish wine. It's really good. Makes for a great combo. Mm. They have a great team of uh, mixologists working here at LPMP, so and it shows. Yeah. 10 out of 10 cocktails, mm -hmm. both of them. Mm -hmm. Croqueta time. Croqueta time. So while Dan tries it, no, you, you go for it and I'm just going to explain because to get the perfect texture croqueta is very, very difficult. Now croquetas do not contain any potato. They look like they contain potato and people believe they contain potato. But it's actually a bechamel sauce which is made from a base of flour and fat and uh, has some milk added. But of course, to get it so it's shapeable into this croquette shape and then breadable and fryable, it takes quite an art form to make it shapeable but still lovely and soft and gooey in the middle. Is it lovely and soft and gooey in the middle? So good. 
nice like crisp from mm -hmm. the outside but kind of like handy explain i've had a couple croquettes so far it also has like the bulky um bechamel sauce but this one kind of has a meaty flavor to mm -hmm. it because you're saying it's made with like a bunch of like that meat broth mm -hmm. exactly mm. so meaty mm -hmm. so soft if you guys have been following my Spanish series, you know I'm a harsh critic of you know anchovies because I don't like that strong fishy odor, but I could eat these all day, really. Mm -hmm. They're like little fish chips. Mm. And actually, Dan, that's a really good point. If you come to Malaga, do not let the English translation of anchovy put you off trying bocadones because they really are nothing like the dark red anchovies that we get up in the north of Spain or that um, like you might have on a pizza back in the States. It's completely different kettle of fish for <laughs> pun intended for one of a bird expression it's um it's a very 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 different experience than an, than an anchovy even though it shares the name <laughs> Alright, love the customs here in Malaga and in Spain because we're getting dessert again with our meal. <laughs> getting a dessert three times actually in this place. Three times. So, uh, this is our main dessert, but then we got some side desserts. Uh, so, we have here torrija, which is so, so typical. It's like a French toast. It's a Spanish version of French toast. Um, it's got uh, toast that's been soaked in milk and egg. It's got cinnamon. It's utterly, utterly delicious. It's fried with some syrup on top. And then we've got this beautiful uh, vanilla bean ice cream on top. Then we have two different types of ice cream. We have the turron, which is uh, very, very typical from Malaga. It's kind of a, a nougat, like a sweet paste made with those almonds. Again, so we see the almonds featuring so often here. We've eaten them as, our, uh, as uh, just fried mar marcona almonds. We've had them in a cold soup. Now we're getting them in ice cream. It's going to be spectacular. And then pistachio ice cream as well. And all of these things are made from scratch here in El uh, We were just being explained uh, that, yeah, everything's made, made homemade here. So I think we're going to notice it. I think we have a surprise there. Ah, in comes our amazing waitress. It's our beautiful orange muscatel. Lovely. Thank you. Gracias. So, another pleasant surprise. We got dessert wine to go with our okay. desserts. The is a Moscatel. Mm. Yeah, a Moscatel, which is a very typical sweet wine from Malaga. Uh, but this one's a little bit different because it's an orange Moscatel, so it's got a, a hint of orange in there as well. Mm. All right. Let's uh, try it out. Let's dive in. Give this a go. Oh my god. Oh man, just that first bite. Mm. I'm a sugar tooth and I love my desserts and my sweets. Yeah. Oh, I gotta take a piece of the ice cream. This is so good. So, torrija mm. is a very, very typical thing that we eat at Easter time here in Malaga. You don't normally see it year round. You normally have about a two week window where you can get torricas and you eat them every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because that's the time it's available. And then it disappears for the rest of the year. But Patricia was just explaining to us that here they left it on the menu at El Pimpi because it was so popular people didn't want them to take it off so they kept extending for a couple of weeks and now it's just on the menu year round as one of their desserts, the torrija. Oh man. So good. So good. There's a nice crisp outside, it's deep fried. The inside's really soft and spongy mm -hmm. but it's all about like the, um, the flavoring on the, on the coating on it. It's mm -hmm. like some cinnamon in it. She didn't mention it but I actually think there might be a bit of booze a bit of booze in the uh, the milk as well. I can oh, wow. taste a bit of a hint of alcohol in there, and yeah. it is. It's not uncommon for that to be the case. Ice cream's nice and creamy. Mm. Great combo. It's a warm dessert with the cold contrast from ice cream. Mm -hmm. Ten out of ten dessert. Mm. Love it. So good. The Spanish French toast. Mm, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, should we try these ice creams? Oh yeah, very excited to try this almond one. It looks so good. So yeah, this almond one is the Turon. This is the most typical from Malaga, so. Let's dig in. All right. Mm -hmm. Stop it. So good. That's insane. Those breadcrumbs are a game changer. Crunchy, a little bit sweet. Kind of like graham I like crackers. Cookie. I think I like cookie crumbs, Cookies. yeah. Yeah. 
and then this which is the actual pieces of turon okay look at that ice cream dripping off it that is that is the definition of food porn mm. Mm. oh my god it has that like nutty natural sweetness from the almond so good made almost like into an almond butter but wow. a little bit more solid yeah yeah mm. so good another 10 out of 10 blown away 10 out of 10 is that 10 out of 10 the almonds <laughs> in spain or something else yeah and especially down here in malaga and andalusia they grow beautifully and um yeah we're very very lucky to have them on the doorstep like mm -hmm. so many other great ingredients i heard from one of my spanish friends that like they really prioritize their desserts at most of these restaurants because if that's the last thing you have and you leave with a bad taste you might have a bad taste of the restaurant and i'm finding that all these restaurants have been having really great desserts like just on par with the food would you say that's a thing here i mean actually that's an interesting fact that i would never have thought of but it seems totally plausible i think it's a great it's a great thought that you always want to leave with a sweet a sweet taste in your mouth yeah so let's move on to our dessert wine let's try our wine chin cheers. chin cheers oh yeah Ooh. <laughs> this one is definitely on like the stronger side for a dessert wine but it's also sweet, has sweet that as well. sweetness very floral mm -hmm. definitely uh, has that orangey touch at the end mm. like an aftertaste sits in your mouth a little bit yeah you really like muscatel is is very a very floral very tropical fruity flavored yeah. grape and you really get all of those things mm -hmm. in a good punch in this yeah. wine it's sweet but it's also a little dry too yeah oh. yeah it's nice mm -hmm. Are you ready for like round three of dessert round three so let's see when we'll tap out <laughs> I'm not far off to be honest. It's a good job we have a separate dessert stomach, uh -huh. is all I can say. Alright, straight pistachio. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Mmm. Very nutty. From the Very pistachio. nutty. Light. It's a little bit melted because it's been sitting here for a minute while we've been uh, trying the others. Mmm. A little bit of crunchy caramelized pistachios in the bottom mm -hmm. if you guys are pistachio lovers you guys would love spain because hanny here is telling me that farm all their mm -hmm. pistachios fresh we have pistachios growing on trees all around andalusia much mm -hmm. like the almonds mm. super fresh crispy nutty really fresh yeah almost like got like a slightly salty edge to this one mm -hmm. really like it yeah Mm. Had amazing dining experience all the way around from appetizers to dessert. I can see why this place is one of the most popular restaurants in Malaga. We got yeah. like, the whole Malagan experience here from the wine, dessert. Yeah. El Pimpi is a bit cocktails even. Co yeah. Oh yeah. Super cocktails. El Pimpi is the bizzo. And actually, do you know what? Sometimes, sometimes. I think amongst locals, El Pimpi can get a bit of a bad rap because it's seen as somewhere that lots of tourists come, which of course is true. It's wonderful. Why wouldn't you come here if you're on holiday? And it also sometimes doesn't get the, the credit it deserves because I think people still often don't understand how the locals eat. And so as a tourist, when you come to Spain, when you come to Malaga, to Andalusia, I really, really strongly encourage you to try and eat like Dan and I have been over the course of our time together, which is just ordering plates and sharing them, having one or two plates at a time, sharing it, have another couple of plates at a time and sharing it. Because the concept of having your own dish doesn't really work here. The food doesn't lend itself to eating in that way. And I know it's culturally very, very different than how we do it in the UK, how you guys do it in the States, but it, it's, it's the way to do it. It's the way to eat like a local is to share plates and you get so much more variety. And yeah, I just think it makes for a great dining experience. Yep. Love it. Cheers to that. Sharing is caring. All right, so on to more food adventures in Malaga. So this is the, the tapas bar part of El Pimpi. It's called the tunnel. You can see why. Um, and it's really got, you can feel the atmosphere. It's super lively, super busy. Uh, in here you can sit at the bar and you can have tapas, so you can have portion, much smaller portions. Uh, and it's, yeah, it's just a great place to come and hang out and have one or two tapas and a drink. So these are all hand-painted tiles. This is beautiful one of El Pimpi here. 
which is a really southern Spanish thing, the hand-painted tiles. So, another nice uh, thing about El Pimpi, everything is homemade, everything is locally sourced. They even have their own garden uh, in Coin, which is a town near to Malaga City, where they grow all their own fruit and veg. Yeah, I'm getting a very green vibe. I feel like I'm in a greenhouse just standing in here. It looks like a garden. Plants all around. They got a wall of Family fame there. here. He's a famous ball fighter. So here we have Antonio Banderas. This is the wall of wall of fame. All of the famous people who have come and visited El Pimpi and signed those barrels. Um, lots of Spanish actors, actresses. Rafa Nadal. <laughs> Yeah, so this dress here, the way these ladies are dressed in this poster, is uh, Verdiales. Oh, it's a very difficult word for me to say. My tongue doesn't go in the right shapes to say Verdiales. Uh, but yeah, very typical from Malaga. All right, so this is one of the most popular monuments in Malaga, the ancient Roman theater. And up there you have the Moorish Fortress. So this is uh, one of the spots you could expect to see a lot of tourists. Stop by, take pictures and enjoy. And also you can take a seat on those steps. And also at night it lights up too. So it's really cool. Really nice sight to see in Malaga. So really great weather, sunny as you guys could tell. But I was telling Hani an observation that I had walking around Malaga. It seems like there's so many terraces out here, so many people just outside eating, drinking, and there's a reason for this. Yeah, I mean, the, ma the main reason is here in Malaga, we're fortunate we have 320 days on average a year of sun. So it rains very little, which means that even in the winter when the temperature drops, lowish i mean we're talking like california low not uh toronto low um you know the temperature drops a little bit but we've usually got these beautiful blue skies and sunshine which lends itself so so well to sitting outside eating and drinking yeah so fun yeah there's even a, a terrace for the local starbucks here <laughs> yeah and, and also it's one of the cooler starbucks i've seen in uh, the <laughs> typical spanish kind of building right there yeah. All right, I wanna thank Hanny here for showing me her beautiful city of Malaga. I mean, as you guys can just see, just walking around the city is magnificent and all the great food, Spanish cuisine, and you know, culture she has been showing me and you guys, great food, vibes, atmosphere here in Malaga. And if you guys wanna know more about Southern Spain, Malaga, or anywhere else in Spain, make sure to check out Hanny. I'll put all her links down below. She also hosts her own travel company and tours so you guys get here up for that as well mm -hmm. but yeah anything else you want to let the viewers know just that it's been an absolute pleasure hosting you i love showing off this gorgeous city to to you and your viewers so thanks for joining us on uh, youtube through the channel thank you for sharing your experience here and yeah of course anytime you're in malaga hit me up yep all right guys if you guys want to see more travel content please like this video comment down below any suggestions you have for us and if you guys have been to Malaga yourselves and subscribe for more DVW and Hanny travel content. Deuces. Deuces.